This video contains advice about writing your first resume that I wish I had gotten when I was a sophomore in college. Or, more appropriately, some advice that I did get, but I wish I had taken more seriously at the time. The career showcase is quickly approaching, and you need to have your resume ready in order to be taken seriously. For those who had never written a resume, which may be the majority, I want to quickly start by introducing the idea behind the resume. This is simply a one-page document that communicates your skills, abilities, and past experiences to employers. Your main objective here is to highlight the experiences and accomplishments that distinguish yourself positively from other chemical engineers. Your objective here is to not to tell your professional life story, nor is it to describe everything you've ever done professionally. For example, most chemical engineering students write that they attend the AICHE meetings or that they are proficient in Microsoft Office. While this may be true, it is also true of an overwhelming majority of chemical engineers. Space is precious on a resume, and I don't recommend wasting it on the obvious. A resume is critical because a recruiter only knows what you tell them. Additionally, it's an important part of your first interaction. Almost every conversation at a career fair begins with a transaction of a resume. The first impression is critical. A good recruiter can scan a resume in 7 to 10 seconds and have a pretty good idea of whether or not you're a potential hire. This is not a lot of time. You need to have, make sure that your resume is communicating what you intend and fast. To start giving you some advice about how to craft your first resume, I figured it would be instructive and reassuring to show you what not to do first. So I dug deep into my archives to find the earliest resume example that I had from my college experience. Looking back on this resume now, I am shocked at how bad it is. Take a moment to look at this resume and pick out at least five things that you think could be improved. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult to highlight five things. I'll go through a few that really bugged me. The first thing that my eye is drawn to is the related coursework section. Remember that the goal of the resume is to distinguish yourself positively. Yet in this section, all I've communicated is that I've taken all my prerequisite courses. In other words, I'm just a normal college kid. Another problem with this section is the amount of space it eats up. This makes it clear that I have nothing else of substance to say, and if I were a recruiter, I would probably just stop reading here. Further down, I have some more problems in my work experiences section. Take a look at my specific duties bullet points. Given the titles of my positions, the bullet points of officiate games for being a referee and to prepare worksheets and activities as a study group leader, are totally redundant and useless sentences. This space is much better filled in another way. Down even further, under activities and leadership and awards and honors, I have some decent looking experiences, but they're totally without context. Why am I choosing to communicate to the recruiter that I was a member of the University of Michigan Frisbee team? Do I expect that to be impressive? Instead, I should be focusing on what was translatable about that experience that will allow me to work well for that company. Here's a slightly better example of a resume. This one is from my junior year of college. Let's look at this resume to see how one year of editing improved it. While the formatting of this resume is much improved from the last iteration, it still looks like I don't have very much to offer a company. When I was in college, I used to think that this was because I didn't have much chemical engineering specific experience. But looking back on it now, I realized that it was all in how I was portraying myself and my experiences. Take a look at my study group leader experience. I've added some more specific bullet points here, and more importantly, they put my experience into context. Even better, I'm just beginning to allude to a translatable skill of creativity with the third bullet point. However, the translatable skills need to be emphasized more instead of merely describing what I did. Also, I need to quantify things. For example, I should have written how many students were in my study group. I communicate something much different whether I had five students in my study group versus 35, and this can all help the recruiter more quickly get a sense for me and my strengths. In another example of failing miserably to communicate what is translatable to engineering, I've doubled down on my Frisbee team mentioned by including other sports I've played. In the current state, this is just filler. It's not that athletic activity shouldn't be placed on a resume, but you need to draw connections from what you do towards engineering. For example, I was oftentimes the captain of my intramural teams. I had to be organized, communicate game times to my teammates, and manage a team of 12 friends. These management and teamwork skills are highly applicable to engineering, but once again, the recruiter won't know unless you tell them. Finally, at the very bottom, I've written that I'm a university honor student. And unfortunately, while my parents might have been proud of me, this isn't a very distinguishing award. 
Similarly, being an attendee of the 87th Annual Award Honors Convocation doesn't really communicate anything about what the honor was, what the convocation was, or what I had to do to achieve that award. In this current state, it's better if I just left that off entirely. I have one more example of a resume, this time from my senior year, right before I left college. The biggest change on this version of my resume is that I now had some actual chemical engineering experience to share. This certainly makes writing your resume easier and less stressful. Still though, you need to frame it correctly. I really like my third and fourth bullet points under my research experience because they quantify and contextualize without getting too far bogged down into specifics. Both experiences speak to my creativity, imagination, and communication with quantifiable numbers of savings and length of the video that I produced. I also drastically reduced the amount of filler. Almost everything on this resume is unique and easy to interpret at a glance. There are a few minor things that I would improve upon looking back on this now, but overall this is a resume that I can be proud of. And just as an aside for all those perfectionists like me, your resume will never be done or perfect. As soon as you think you've got it perfect, you'll go and have another experience that'll make you go and redo everything. It's very frustrating. You can go crazy trying to tweak things here or there, and at some point you just need to take a deep breath and call it good enough. This is a very delicate balance to strike. Let's get into some general advice. First up is bullet points. Most students have somewhere between one and four bullet points underneath each experience that they list on their resume. In my opinion, bullet points should quantify or contextualize translatable skills, not merely describe what you did. This is the biggest mistake that I see, that it's just a description that is redundant. So for example, say that you worked as a server in a restaurant, which is a perfectly fine thing to put on your resume, by the way. A bad bullet point would be took customers' orders and waited tables. Why? Is because that is a description that is redundant based on being a server at a restaurant. A slightly better way to write it would be that you worked on a team of 14 other employees to ensure prompt service and customer satisfaction. This is better because you're at least contextualizing that you're, you're working on a team, but still not awesome because prompt service and customer satisfaction are kind of vague terms. A really good bullet point that I think you could write would be that you work 20 hours per week while maintaining a 14 credit hour university course load. And this communicates to the recruiter that you're good at managing your time and that you have a strong work ethic. Another good bullet point would be that you earned Employee of the Month honors for innovation and order-taking efficiency. This shows initiative and drive. Next, let's talk about the skills section. Almost every resume that I review from a sophomore chemical engineer says that they are proficient in Microsoft Office, like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And while this may be true, once again, this doesn't distinguish you from anybody else. At this point, I would say it's safe to assume that everybody is proficient with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And you should really only put this on your resume if you have some type of certification or award or some other type of external uh, certification that you are really good with any of these programs. You want to be very careful about listing your competency levels with your skills. If you notice in one of my resumes, I wrote that I was proficient in the Spanish language. And that might have been stretching it just a little bit. At my peak, I could hold a conversation in Spanish, but only if the person I was speaking with spoke very slowly and was very patient with me as I thought about what I was trying to say back. If a company had said, oh good, you're proficient in Spanish, we're going to send you to a Spanish-speaking company so that you can work over there, I would have been a little bit over my head. Next is awards. And here, context is key. Just saying the name of your award doesn't communicate what it is or why it's special. So you should aim to answer as many questions about that award as you can. As an example, don't just write Wendy's High School All-American. Instead, try to answer the questions. What are the criteria of the award? Did you apply yourself or were you nominated? What percentage of the candidates achieved this award? This better helps put it into context. Next up is aesthetics. This is where you can easily be wasting the most time and get the most frustrated. My advice is to leave the formatting until you're happy with the content. And that is because if you start adding things or taking things away, that's going to upset the balance of how it looks and leave you to redo everything that you just did. You should be using white space to frame blocks of your text and guide your reader's eyes. A wall of text and no white space is very overwhelming and unlikely to be read entirely. Just take a look at this image of the slide that I'm projecting right now. Notice the space I have between my first and my second bullet point. Third is to use bold and italics for emphasis, and you should look up the context of each one of those. You do not want to write in all capital letters because it's slower to read and it seems like you're shouting. 
And then fourth, if you have access to resume paper, go ahead and use it. But if not, don't worry about it. Don't make a special trip to Office Max or something like that just to get resume paper. It's not that big of a deal. Finally, I have some miscellaneous general advice. First is that items on your resume should follow some logical order. You can do whatever you want depending on how you wish to portray your experiences. For many sophomore chemical engineers, they choose to do reverse chronological. So that's starting with the most recent and then working your way backwards in time. Second, recognizing that resume writing is very iterative. As I mentioned before, you're never going to attain the perfect resume. And if you do, the chances are that you'll probably have a new experience or a new insight that'll make your old version obsolete. So seek advice from as many people as possible and keep in mind that you don't have to incorporate every single thing. Finally, don't trust spell check to catch all your errors. Don't even trust yourself to catch all your errors. Have other people, other friends, proofread your resume meticulously. If you have a typographical error on such an important document, it shows carelessness. If you were paying attention earlier, you noticed that I had a typo on one of my resumes earlier that I'm very ashamed of. So always make sure at least three times, check it over with fresh eyes, especially the night before. To wrap up this presentation, I wanted to conclude by showing you what a really awesome resume looks like. This is from a senior in chemical engineering from last year from our department at the University of Florida. Everything about this resume is very, very good. And when I saw it, I asked him for permission to share it with my sophomores. And thankfully, he was willing to oblige. So go ahead and pause this video to read this resume in detail and see if you can pick out one or two things that you can incorporate in your own resume. That'll be all for this video. Good luck in writing your resumes. And let me know if you have any questions.